Hello everybody, this is Tech Cut. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is following up my last CLI video, going over some more awesome applications that you can run from your Linux terminal. Now this video is sponsored by Linode and you can run all of these applications over on your very own instance of Linode because, well, these are all command line interface applications. I will be talking a little bit more about Linode at the end of this video, but just know, use that first link in the description for a $100 60 day credit to go ahead and spin up your very own Linux server for really whatever you want. So coming in at the first application on this list, we're gonna take a look at another terminal system monitor, and this one is Bottom. Now, if one thing's for certain, we have a ton of options when it comes to monitoring our systems through the terminal. You're probably familiar with tools like Top, HTOP, BTOP, but this is Bottom. Like most other system monitors, we can see our CPU performance, we can see our memory, our network activity, we can go through all the various processes that is on our computer, and this one has a really nice way to see how much of the disk usage that you're currently utilizing on your computer. And the cool thing about this is there's a lot of pre-built color themes, so if I go over here and I add the color groove box variable, hit enter, you can see it now changes the color to match that specific color scheme. If we go ahead and back out of there, we could also do dash dash help, which this will show all the different options and variables that we have available to us with this application, such as all the various supported widget names, various layouts and options that we can configure to better match specifically what we're looking for. So another example of a color theme is Nord. So if I go ahead and change this variable over to Nord, you can see it better matches that color scheme. Also, while you're in this, if you go ahead and type the question mark button, you'll get a lot of various options here as well, including all the hotkeys that you can use within bottom to manipulate and control the program as you would prefer. So for those of you who enjoy typing tests, this is going to be the perfect little tool for you. I'm not completely sure how to say this. I'm just gonna to say Topi for this video. This is a trusty terminal typing tester written in the Rust programming language, and you can run this just by downloading the binary. So I'm in the right directory. So if I do LS, you can see I have the application right here. So I'm just gonna give that a quick run and there we go. So we could go ahead and just type exactly what is on the screen here. There's all kinds of variables and stuff that we can do. Control R is to restart, Control C is to quit. And if you want to change the number of words, for example, you could just do dash N and then type in the amount of words. So let's say for this example, I wanna do a whole 50 words. So let's go ahead and try that and ready, set, go. Now I'm doing a lot better than I usually do but I really like the input it gives you when you mess up on a mess up on purpose. You can see that it's red, so you just wanna go back and fix your errors. And when we do finish up, it's gonna show us a really nice summary of how we performed. So if I just type in this last word correctly, there we go. You can see it took me 61 seconds to type 50 words of the top 250. I'll talk about that in just a sec. Accuracy 95%, made 11 mistakes, 44.5 words per minute. For me personally, that is not too bad. Now, if I go control C, there's another variable option we have, and that is to go ahead and change our word lists. So if I do dash W O S, this is going to go off your operating systems word list. And additionally, if you have your own word list you want to use, you could do dash F and point this to a specific path. So for example, if I do go with O S, oh my bad, it's W O S, hit enter. And you can see the words are a lot more complicated because in our operating system, there is a lot more words. So I'm gonna assume this is gonna be a lot worse of a test. I'm gonna run through this real quick. All right, th this one was definitely more difficult. I'm going to assume my performance was not 44 words per minute, but here we are at 32 words per minute. So you did see that with adding the operating system word list that did greatly increase the difficulty. <laughs> All right, so the next application we're gonna talk about is Word Grinder. Go ahead, give that a launch. What this is, is a simple Unicode aware word processor that of course runs in the console. Overall, this is basically what you get. It's designed just to simply get out of your way and let you have a good time writing. Sports basic paragraph styles, text character styles, and screen markup. And it does have a pretty nice menu interface. If I go ahead and hit escape, it will bring up the menu. And here we have file edit style documents navigation. And you can see various keys that associate themselves with these options. So for example, if I went into file, you can see I can create a new document set, save, load, basically all the options you'd expect out of a standard text editor, but all here within the terminal. 
If you go over to edit, copy, cut, paste, redo, undo, whatever you need. And of course it wouldn't be a paragraph writer text editor without a pretty good spell checker. So let's go back over style. We have set italic, bold, plain, and we do have the option to change the paragraph style for really whatever you would like. And typing on it's pretty easy. You just start typing and it's as good as that. And of course you can space in, you could go down, start a new paragraph and type as you would like. And I made that italicized just by hitting control I. Now if I go control B, I can do it again, type as you would like. And if I go control B and control I, then I will be able to type normal. Pretty simple, but it's really an awesome tool if you just want a clean typing interface. So sticking with the trend of text editors, we're going to be talking about Micro. Now this is a simple text editor similar to Nano, but this one is highly customizable and it will allow you to set color themes, it has syntax highlighting, and it even has a virtual terminal built right into the text editor. I'm going to hit Control Q to back out of this real quick. You can see it asks us if we'd like to save before quitting. I'm going to go no, and let's go ahead and open up a document with this. So right now we're in our bottom configuration for the application we just looked at. Let's go Micro Bottom TO. OML, and here we are in this configuration for the bottom application. Looks like most of everything is commented out, but if I go ahead and get rid of some of this, you'll be able to see some of the uh, Santec or the syntax highlighting here, which overall is very helpful, especially in a uh, configuration files like this. Now this application also supports common key bindings similar to text editors like gedit, notepad++, which means you don't have to look up how to exit the application. Like I said earlier, it was just control Q to go ahead and quit, pretty self-explanatory. And of course you have a lot more options. So if I go control T, this is going to open up a new tab and you can see the two tabs here. Cool thing about this, I can actually use the mouse if I would like to, to go between the tabs I have open, or I could just do alt and then use the period or comma keys to go back and forth in between these. Now, cool thing is that without having to exit out, we could go control E, which is going to open up a little command prompt. And then here we could go ahead and type in various commands. So if I type in term, for example, and for this, I'm not going to save it. So now we have our terminal opened within micro. So I could type really whatever I want, work in here real quick. And what we could do is just go control Q to go ahead and quit out of that terminal. And like I was saying earlier, you can use the mouse. So if I go and just click through here and then I can like highlight text, go back and that will get rid of the text. So even though this is in the terminal, you can use this like a typical text editor and that was just control Z like it normally would to undo that edit. And Micro does have a lot of various uh, plugins that you can install. So if I just did like a Micro install and then whatever the plugin name is, I would be able to do that as well. And I will be linking down below so you could check out more of Micro as well as all the other plugins that you could go ahead and grab for it. Now, next up is a fan favorite. This is going to be Midnight Commander or MC for short. Go ahead and type in that command and we have a full file manager for the terminal that will allow us to navigate around and do really whatever we need. We can view files, edit files, easily copy and move files, create zip files, run commands without having to leave Midnight Commander. And it's all done within these two tabs. And if I can switch between them just by hitting tab, and then here, if I go ahead and just use the arrow keys to move around, I could jump in between these various directories. With Midnight Commander open, you can see down here, I have a terminal, so I could just begin typing and use or execute really any command that I need to while having this open. And then we can use the function keys to actually kind of interact with these files. For example, this is the uh, bottom TOML file that I was just messing with. If I hit F3, it's going to allow us to view the file. And you can see some options here. We can quit with 10, raw, search, go to, lots of different things. I'm just gonna do F3 to quit out of there. Now, if I want to edit that file, I can just hit F4 and this brings it up in a text editor. And with this one, I can still click around, highlight things and actually use the mouse for a lot of the functions if I would like to. And hitting escape will take you out. Now, if I want to copy a file, I could just hit F5 with that selected, and you can see I can copy the file to a source. And I do have various options, and like I said, you can actually use your mouse to go ahead and manipulate all this if you would like to. Now, if we go ahead and hit F2, this is going to open up a menu that will allow us to do a lot of different things and really unlock the functionality of a full-fledged file manager. So here we can compress the entire subdirectory if we would like to, view manuals, copy to a remote host, a lot of different things. So if I just wanted to compress that uh, bottom config file, I could just do compress current subdirectory, uh, create a file name. So I could do uh, btm-compress, hit enter, 
And now since I did that as the subdirectory, I could actually go back a directory and I should have that compressed file right there. So I briefly covered everything. This isn't like a full fledged video diving deep into every feature of all of these applications. I would definitely recommend you go ahead and check out the config files. But if you do want any full fledged videos or tutorials on anything we talk about in this video, you can go ahead and leave a comment down below. Now the next application we're going to take a look at is called eSpeak. Now, this is kind of just a, a cool thing to play around with. What this is, is a command line tool for text to speech. If we go ahead and type eSpeak and then use words in quotes, it'll actually go ahead and try to say that. So if I do a sub to tech hut and then hit enter, you can see it's very, very robotic, but it's still something that's cool to have. So we could try that again with a little bit more text. And of course, it doesn't just say what you type in the terminal. You can have it read text files and other files as well. So for example, I have this Fedora after.txt. So all I would do is type in eSpeak dash F for a specific file. And then we're going to do the Fedora after, after txt. Hit enter. And, and you get the point. It's going to start reading commands and that's not going to sound right, but you can have it read files to you, which is really nice, especially if you have like a large text that you just want to kind of listen to in the background, even though it is in that awkward kind of robotic voice. And uh, speaking of awkward robotic voices, you can actually change the pitch and the speed of the voice as well. And you can actually save the output of what you want to say as a, a file as well. So for example, here I have a little string of text. I am going to do e speak s 100, which that's the speed. Pitch is going to be 200. I'm going to have it say subscribe to TechCut. And then I'm going to save that out as TechCut.waf. Hit enter. Since I did save it, it's not going to read it out to me. But what we can do is open this up with a piece of software such as MPV techhut.waf. Enter. <laughs> you can see it changed the pitch and all that. It's a pretty cool little application to go ahead and play around with. Now we're going to go to the last and final application for this video. And in my opinion, I definitely saved the best for last. And this is the ASCII Aquarium application. Hit enter. We get a beautiful little aquarium within our terminal. Personally, I use this application for running it on my server because it is hooked up to a screen. I'm either running like an H top or bottom, for example, or this in the background. That is pretty cool. You see, we have some fishes blowing bubbles. We have boats going by. But of course, like anything, there are some options. If I want to pause this, I can hit P. So I could check out this big fish that's swimming by right here if I would like to. If I hit P again, it will unpause it. If I want to redraw, so if I don't really like what's going on, I can hit R and it will restart. So then I can P and check out that shark. If I'm scared of sharks, I can hit R again, which will redraw the application. Additionally, if I hit Control C and back out of there, they have a classic mode. So if you're familiar with this application and you like how it looked before, you could just go with the classic, which will just be some typical first uh, first species of fish from the earlier version of this application. So I'm probably not going to see any sharks with uh, this classic mode. Ooh, and there's ducks too. We got to love ducks. So like I said in the beginning of this video, sponsored by Linode, thank you guys so much. Uh, if you're interested in setting up your own website, game server, whatever it may be, Linode is a fantastic option. They have a ton of easy one-click web installers. And if you're interested in setting up your very own NextCloud instance, go ahead and check out my video on their new Docker all-in-one installer. And speaking of videos, I actually have a lot of videos up on the Linode YouTube channel. So I'm going to be linking to those down below if you're interested on some very Linode specific tutorials on setting up things like Ghost, Homer, whatever it may be. And with that, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for future uploads. I hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.